Okay, so the next uh, spatial discrete random variable that we are going to analyze is the negative binomial random variable. So when you look at the name, you will think that uh, this random variable is somehow related to the negative binomial random variable. However, it is not that related. OK, so there is a relationship between that, OK, between binomial random variable and negative binomial random variable. However, not as strong as the relationship between the geometric random variable and negative binomial random variable. So you see that this random variable is closely related to the geometric random variable. So again, we consider independent Bernoulli trials. And each of these Bernoulli trials will end up with success. And the probability of a success is going to be defined between zero and one again. However, this time we are going to perform these experiments until we observe the art success. OK, remember in the geometric random variable, we are counting the number of Bernoulli trials until we observe our first success. In the negative binomial random variable, we generalize this expression and say that we are going to stop until we observe our art success. So R can be any positive integer, and if R is equal to one, then this is going to be a geometric random variable. So the total number of trials that we perform is called a negative binomial random variable. So the number of tries we need to perform until we observe our art success is going to be a negative binomial random variable. So how do we develop its probability mass function? It is going to be a little complicated, but if you focus on the outline, you will understand. OK, so obviously the art success can be observed in at least R trials, okay? If you want to stop when you observe R successes, then this means at least the number of success, the number of uh, trials that you need to perform should be R. And unfortunately, if the success probability is small, the number of trials that you need to perform until you observe your R success can be infinitely large as well, okay? So, in order to develop the probability mass function, we first need to uh, focus on here. So if you want to observe R success, then there should be exactly R successes in these X trials, okay? If you want to observe your R success in the X trial, then there should be exactly R successes here, okay? And X minus R of them must be failures. So therefore, in X trials, if you observe R successes, and if you observe X minus R failures, the corresponding probability will be P to the power R times one minus P to the power X minus R. Now, if we are going to observe our R success in the X trial, this means our last trial, the X trial, must be definitely a success. However, in the previous X minus one trials, we should observe R minus one successes in any permutation, okay? So in the first X minus one trials, there should be R minus one successes in any permutation. However, the last trial, which is the X trial, must definitely be a success. Therefore, we multiply the success probabilities and the failure probabilities with the combination between X minus one and R minus one. X minus one choose R minus one, which means in the first X minus one trial, any R minus one of them can be successes in any permutation. Therefore, this is going to be the probability of observing your art success exactly on the X trial. And this is going to be the probability mass function of the negative binomial random variable. So we say that if we are going to stop when we observe art success, okay, then the number of tries we need to perform should at least be R, and theoretically it can be infinitely large. 
And the probability of observing your art success in the X trial is P to the power R times one minus P to the power X minus R multiplied with the number of permutations calculated with X minus one choose R minus one. And it is not possible for a negative binomial random variable to take any other value. So the probability mass values at everywhere else is equal to zero. The negative binomial random variable has two parameters. The parameters are the number of necessary successes to observe, which is R, and the success probability in each experiment, that is P. So by assigning different R and P values, we get different negative binomial random variables. P is again, should be chosen between zero and one, and R can be any positive integer and when you select R equal to one, then negative binomial random variable is going to be exactly a geometric random variable. So let's solve a question about negative binomial random variable to understand better. Suppose we have a fair die and we are going to toss it consecutively. So if we have a fair die, then any of the outcomes will have equal chances, that is one over six probability. A, what is the probability that we observe or church six on the seventh toss? Now in this question, every time we toss a die, the event of success is considered as tossing a six. Okay, so when you toss a six, it is going to be counted as a success. And the question asks is, what is the probability that your third success will happen exactly in the seventh toss? Okay, so we are going to stop until we observe our third success. And the number of trials that we need to perform is a negative binomial random variable. And we are looking for the probability of this negative binomial random variable to be exactly equal to seven. So let's focus on solving this first part, then we are going to come back to part B. So the probability of a six is one over six because we have a fair die. And we are interested in the probability of the third success, the third six to occur on the seventh toss. Then we say that the number of die tosses that we need to perform is going to be a negative binomial random variable where the number of successes that we need to observe until stopping is going to be equal to three, and the success probability at each Bernoulli trial is one over six. So we are looking for the probability of this negative binomial random variable being exactly equal to seven. Then we use the probability mass function of the negative binomial random variable. So let's explain every step. In seven trials, in seven trials, there should be exactly three successes and four failures. Obviously, the seventh trial is the one where we are going to stop, which means the seventh trial must be a success. But the remaining, in the remaining six trials, the first six trials, there should be exactly two successes. So with six choose two, we multiply the success and failure probabilities. Hence, this probability is 0 0.0174. So let's go back to part B. What is the probability that we observe three numbers greater than four in less than five tosses? Okay, so when you read the question for the first time, it may not seem very comprehensible, but it is again quite easy to solve with negative binomial random variable. So what is the stopping criterion? So we are going to stop when you observe three numbers that are greater than four. So which means whenever you toss a die, if you observe a greater value than four, which means if you observe a five or six, then it is going to be counted as a success. And we are going to stop when we observe three successes. Okay, the event of success is tossing a five or six and the success probability is one over three. And the stopping criterion is observing three numbers. And the question is asking this, what is the probability that we stop in less than five tosses? Okay. Now, in order to observe three successes, then you need to perform this experiment at least three times. 
And if we are going to stop in less than five tosses, then we are just going to look at three, two probabilities. What is the probability of completing this experiment in three tosses and four tosses? So we say in this case for part B, the success is having a number that is greater than four. Unfortunately, we say that number greater than equal to four here. So again, we have a misprint here. So we need to change these greater than or equal to sign to greater. OK. And the observing a number that is greater than four is uh, having the chance of one over three. OK. So if we consider y to denote a negative binomial random variable, where the number of successes to observe until stopping is going to be three and the success probability is one over three, we are looking for the probability of be y being less than five, okay? So what is the probability that we stop in less than five tosses? So we can stop either in three tosses or in four tosses. So we are going to look at these two probabilities. What is the stopping probability at three tosses? Which means all these first three throws or die tosses will end up with a number that is greater than four. There will be no failures. And as you can see, in the first two tries, again, we are going to observe two successes. So this coefficient is simply one. Plus, the probability of y being four means what? We are going to observe our third success in the fourth trial, which means there will be exactly three successes, one failures. And among the first three trials, there will be exactly two successes because the last trial, the fourth trial, will be a success. So these two probabilities are computed as 1 over 27 and 6 over 81, and they sum up to 1 over 9. So let's explain the negative binomial random variable further and explain its relationship with the geometric random variable. Remember now, geometric random variable uh, measures or counts the number of Bernoulli trials, each of which is uh, each of which ends up with a success with probability p, and we are going to stop until we uh, we are going to stop when we observe our first success. So this is going to be a geometric random variable. On the other hand, a negative binomial random variable's stopping criterion is to observe your art success. It is a generalization of the geometric random variable where the stopping criterion is to observe our successes, not just one. So in the negative binomial random variable, if you define R, the number of successes to observe as one, then you get a geometric random variable. So we say negative binomial random variable as a model okay as a random variable covers a geometric random variable okay so geometric random variable is a special case of negative binomial random variable when you choose r to be equal to one so what is the relationship between binomial and negative binomial random variable it is actually just in the name okay there is not as a strong relationship as the one we have here OK, one we have between negative binomial and geometric random variable. However, there is a little relationship, so we need to explain this. So a binomial random variable counts the number of successes in n Bernoulli trials. OK, so we fix the number of trials and we count the number of successes. In a negative binomial random variable, we fix the number of successes and count the number of trials. OK, so the relationship is like this. So vice versa. We say in a binomial random variable, the random variable counts the number of successes in a fixed number of trials. And in the negative binomial random variable, in order to observe a fixed number of successes, how many trials we need to perform is counted. So the relationship between binomial and negative binomial random variable is this. Now, 
Let's talk about the expected value and the variance of the negative binomial random variable. And you see if the expected value of a geometric random variable is one over P, then the expected value of a negative binomial random variable is going to be R over P because we are going to continue until we observe our successes. So the expected number of uh, uh, the Bernoulli trials that we need to perform is 1 over p if we are going to stop in the first success, then the expected number of trials we need to perform until we observe our successes should be r over p. And with a similar analogy, we can also say that the variance of the negative binomial random variable is r multiplied the variance of the geometric random variable. Okay. So let's solve another question about the negative binomial random variable. A lottery pays off with probability 0 0.05. And on the average, how many times should we play the lottery to get our first payoff? So every time we play the lottery, we can be successful with a small probability of 0 0.05. And we are going to continue playing lottery uh, until we win a uh, lottery. OK, so how many times should we play the lottery to get our first payoff on the average? So it is basically asking this, what is the expected number of uh, lottery plays to get the first payoff? If we get the first payoff with, if we get the payoff with 0 0.05 probability, then the number of tries we need to perform until our first success is going to be 1 over 0 0.05 because that is the expected value of a geometric random variable. So let's see this. The number of lotteries we need to play until our first payoff is a geometric random variable with success probability 0 0.05. And expected value of a geometric random variable is 1 over the success probability. In this case, that is equal to 20. Now let's go back. This time we are going to continue playing the lottery until we get our fifth payoff. So until our fifth win, we are going to continue playing. In this case, the number of lotteries that we are going to play until our fifth payoff. So again, there is a misprint here. It's not going to be first, but it is going to be fifth. It is a negative binomial random variable. And the negative binomial random variable here as the parameter success, number of successes parameter is equal to five and the success probability equal to 0 0.05. And expected value of y here is going to be r over p, in this case, five over 0 0.05. So on the average, we need to play 100 lotteries to get our fifth payoff, okay? This is the average number of plays. So that is not the exact value. So nobody can, say surely that we need to play exactly 100 lotteries to get our fifth payoff. So this is the average number of plays we need to perform.